Hey guys, this is Arthur. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to make procedural eyes inside Maya. This will cover a lot of hyper shade, so you can apply these techniques onto other stuff you guys are doing. So anyways, let's get to it. I start with a sphere. And I scale that up. Bring down the subdivision levels to 10. Toggle shaded and rotate that 90 degrees in the x-axis. Awesome! So I make everything from the same sphere. So up front I duplicate it and add that to a new layer just so I don't select it by accident. Alright, so this will be the cornea and then we will have an iris and then a pupil now let's start select these faces grow that selection then move this forward and I usually scale that really pronounce that bump there that's all you need then add this to a new layer and toggle the previous one and let's make the iris. I delete this portion of the sphere. We don't need it. Then I take the vertex from here, grow my soft selection, and push that back. Because I want to get that curvature from the iris. Now for the pupil, just delete this. For the pupil, we can extrude this push that back, and extrude again, scale down, fill that hole. Then I split this, so split, interactive split. I don't know, I just like fixing the topology. Bothers me if the topology is a mess. Now there, face! Select these faces, extract these faces, then scale that up. Oh, wait. There, scale that up. Then, up front, apply a surface shader. We don't need to color this. It's a void of dark energy. Yeah, and it's in our eyes. Nah, just kidding. <coughs> you guys have no idea how many takes I've did. <coughs> Anyways, insert an edge loop here and here. Three. Awesome. And there. Now we want to match this with this. So I go in, I lock, I lock this, and I move this forward. There. I just really want to match this with this edge. So I'll scale this down, center the pivot. So modify center pivot. There, scale this down. Push. A good place to look at it would be here. There. You could even untoggle the X-ray and really see if it's moving or not. And there. That's a good start. Now the thing is, um. Once we go in and shade this and render this, um, this bump here will fake a lens refraction, meaning our our iris and our pupil will look bigger in the render. It will bob out just because this is faking a lens effect. So truly, our iris doesn't have to be this big. So take this. Toggle soft selection and I scale it down. Now that is all we need. Nope, that's a bit too much. Yep, now that is all we need. There you go. <coughs> now let's go in and shade this. So open up hypershade. Open up hypershade. There you go. I work with Mental Ray, 
I recommend you guys do too. It is known to be stronger than V-Ray. V-Ray is just faster and easier and for children. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, Mia Material X Passes. Go to... It's red because I'm using Maya software. Should be in Mental Ray. Should be in Mental Ray. There you go. <coughs> then apply this to the Geo. Apply it to the Geo. It's not working. I didn't apply it to the Geo because the Geo is locked. There you go. There. <coughs> so my attributes. No. So my Mia. There you go. It is applied to the Cornea. Now the Mia material. Make this white. Now reflectivity is not 0.6. I usually bring that down to 0.27. There you go. Because our eyes do not reflect that much. They do, but not that much. <coughs> On the transparency, I like adding a ramp. There you go. Ramp. There. So what I did was I hooked up this ramp into the transparency node of the Mia material. So now I can create an alpha within Maya using the ramp. Amazing. <laughs> you can't view the transparency in the default renderer, so you have to go into viewpoint 2.0. Viewport. Viewpoint. What is wrong with me? Viewport 2.0 and toggle shaded. So now the transparency is not working the way we want it to because we are using color values. Alphas only use black and white because black is zero, white is one. There you go. Because it's a value node. There. So now see as I move the values transparency covers stuff we want it to now I'm doing this backwards there you go should be here and what is wrong with my iris oh because everything got oh my god <laughs> okay for some reason my iris my iris Wait. There. Um, this shader was applied to the iris at the same time, so I'll bring back the Lambert. Apply it to my iris. There you go. That was messed up. <coughs> Anyways, back to my ramp. Now it's just a matter of really pushing it towards the edge. There you go and really sharpening that edge yeah this will take some time patience guys uh, almost there there you go aha and that's it that's how you set up the cornea. Now the grid might lead you to believe that this is still transparent. Nope, that's just the grid acting up. Don't believe the grid. The grid is a lie. Anyways. <coughs> now let's go in and color this. So in the color. In the color node, I like putting in layered textures. Now we will be using this a lot. This is, think of this as layers in Photoshop. It's really just that. Now you can layer your textures. I could apply a texture here and then add another layer and add another one and apply a texture there and apply a texture there. Yeah, we'll be doing that. So anyways, in the color, um, for the base color, I like adding a ramp. Another ramp. We'll be using these guys a lot. So make this white, and then delete these. There. 
I will go into more detail later. Let's go back to our layer texture and now I want to make a cloud. This will be our first procedural. The cloud procedural. It is the greatest thing in the world. Cloud. Do you agree? Big, big pieces of water and gas in the sky. So beautiful. Anyways. <coughs> Now, I'll apply this to our layer texture on top. I'll throw it on top. So the layers work from left to right. So you want to throw this on top. Middle click drag. This is all middle click dragging. Now, layer texture. Uh, yeah. So you see these dark spots. We do not like that. That is a big no-no. That is happening because of the edge threshold. So throw that down. That will get rid of those dark spots um, in the render view okay because the more edge threshold these are the dark spots no matter how much you change this the dark spots will stay there so you want to throw the edge threshold down and yeah I'll make this a bright red a pure red that's color one and in color two I'll make that darker red this will be the blood layer of the eye Mm-hmm. Yep, blood layer. Alright. So in the layered texture, um we want to make an alpha for this cloud again with a handy dandy ramp. So throw in a ramp. Throw that into the layered texture. Throw that into its alpha. There you go. Graph this again, just to clean up the workspace. And it's not working the way we want it to because, again, our ramp has to be color value of black and white. There you go. Push this up, push this down. Ta-da! Awesome. So now, back to the ramp I made in the first place. Like I said, I'll go into more detail. Um, I like adding an outline before it goes into the iris. If you guys look into the, mir into the mirror and focus on your eyes, we actually have like the thin outline just before it gets into the iris. So I add a new... I add a new color. For this eye, I'm going to make a brown eye. So I use a violet outline. If you were working with blue eyes, you'd use like a blue outline or a green one, depending. You guys should look at reference. Lots and lots of reference. Reference everywhere. And there just a really thin outline nothing too fancy nothing too complicated might want to darken that a bit desaturate it there you go not too much you guys won't even realize this once we put the color inside alright so now for the iris um, scale this up a bit there, because I really wanted to touch the border of that transparency. Anyways, for the iris, I will apply a new Mia material. Mia material. And assign. Oh, it's not selected. Why? But why? There you go. Then graph this. Awesome. Now, the iris is not that reflective. I mean, come on. Have you ever seen reflective irises? Only in Terminator. Anyways. In the reflectivity, I bring this down. Point one. And the glossiness, I bring down to point one. Then throw this 32. I could actually increase glossiness just a bit. 
just a bit more there you go just to bring out a bit of the spec in the BRDF you want to increase the zero degree reflection now I do not want to explain this because it will take me half the day to explain just this so that'll be another story you guys could look it up again that's BRDF anyways um so now let's color this so in the Mia material I will take the color node and apply a new layer texture it's pretty much the same thing so I go in and take a noise 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 there a noise procedural okay before anything else I'll make a ramp there you go so I have my noise I have my ramp and I have my layer texture alright so I'm gonna throw in this ramp by default you could do it that way guys you could throw this in and just hit default it will pile them up by itself so noise put noise over the ramp um toggle the visibility first there alright so now the ramp um, this will control the color so as you can see um, it's not working the way we want it to because we extruded this and we modified the geo so the UVs are, got messed up in the process so I select this and I create UVs I planar map it at the Z axis then apply close there you go that fixes the problem so now layer texture um, in the layer texture node the ramp I will change the colors so the type of ramps there are a lot of ramps there's a U ramp there's a diagonal ramp there's a radial ramp but the ramp that we want is the circular ramp this is how we do it so I change the colors to a brighter brown then a darker brown here yep you can even fake the shadows here then in this blue I like adding a really dark brown there then for the last layer I usually add a black layer to fake that shadow in the border so there see grow in that shadow brighten this up a bit more brighten the lower the brightness on this one. Oh no 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 you want to keep this bright because once we start piling up these procedurals this will get darker and darker so don't worry about it guys so back into the layered um, I'll bring up this noise now I can multiply this over multiply oh that is amazing and now you have an eye disease which looks terrible let's fix that with laser eye surgery or something no just kidding anyways in the noise texture noise procedural texture it has this really interesting feature called implode here implode if I implode this it will turn into those iris thingamajiggers lines there you go that's all you had to do um you can increase frequency you can lower frequency depending on what you're going for okay I usually add two noise layers to it so I take another piece of noise and I throw that into the layer texture default again now in the layered texture, by default it throws it at the bottom for some reason. Maya. <coughs> then multiply this over. Lessen the alpha a bit. I can bring down its opacity. 
Same with the other one. I could bring down its opacity just a touch. All right. So in this noise layer, I like to implode it not as much, but just enough. There, something like that. Now it's matching the first one too much, so I want to rotate that a bit here in the rotate frame in the placement node. Every texture you put has its own placement node. So you take this placement node and you can rotate frame. And really go in and customize what you're making. Yeah, that's it. Um, I like to darken this area a bit more. So go back into your ramp. And you can darken that by increasing this. Oh, too much, too much. There. Awesome. And that's it. Well, wait, one more thing. A cloud, just to randomize that. So a cloud. Throw in the cloud. Layered texture. Throw that cloud in. Move it on top. And multiply. Again, those dark spots. Gosh, that is terrible. Those dark spots. Edge threshold. There. This is just to randomize the color so I can increase the blackness and really take that out. And in my noise, no, in my layer texture, bring down the alpha of this cloud and the alpha of my other pieces of noise. There. Until you get something you like. I like this. I like you. You're nice. Anyways. Let's do a test render. All this shading and stuff, but don't see what's happening in the render. So anyways, apply, well, I'm just going to do basic lighting here. Nothing too fancy. Just throw in a directional light. Casting shadows. Use ray trace shadows. I will cover this some other time if you guys want. Lighting, another thing I love. Duplicate this for that fill, the bottom, make the intensity 5, 5.5. Five. Duplicate that, said duplicate that, and there, basic basic lighting. And another thing is I would want to throw away the emit speculars on these things. I only want one specular for the light. We could fake that, but I, uh, we could do that some other time, I guess. Render it. And there you go, a very, 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 very basic eye. All with procedurals. And in your own time, you could go in and texture your own veins um, without procedurals. I wouldn't recommend using procedurals. That will take a lot of practice. Um. I'm still trying to figure out veins with procedurals, but maybe you guys can. So yeah, I hope this helps. Just go in and experiment with your hypershade. See how the pupil is still really big? So yeah, you might want to go in and scale it down a bit more because we're getting that bobbed lens effect with mental array, which is amazing. Yeah. For the edges, you just want to increase aliasing, that's all you really have to do. And you, for the reflections to work, you might want to throw in a, a reflection. Let's do that now. So I'll go into Google, my good friend Google. 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 
Oh yeah, was working on some. You t what? Google. And um, let's look for outdoor. Pa no, 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 no. Indoor panoramic images. Images. Meh, this will work. All we really need are the reflections. They don't really have to be that detailed. I mean, come on. Who's gonna look at reflections and say, oh, dude, your reflection is off by like 0.515? I don't care. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's go back into our first Mia, this one. And, oh no, we're just gonna apply reflections, right? In your render options, go to indirect lighting. And image-based lighting, aha, another really nice feature of Mental Ray. Then just apply that. Now what that did was, because we're in viewport 2.0, we can't see that. So go back to your default rendering. What it did was, it made an environment for us. Good guy, Mental Ray. Now you do not want to see the environment, it will just distract your eyes from what you're really shading. So just turn off primary visibility. It will still take effect, but you just won't see it in the render. Just turn off primary visibility in the render stats. Here inside its own attribute. So now, hit render, and you should get reflections. There now, you can now see reflections on the eye. Reflections are working well. There. And here. Yeah. Another thing I will show you guys, very important, let's make bump maps using the using the textures we've already made. So go into your iris and let's use these. Before you can really use them, you have to hook them up to a luminance node. So let's take a layered texture. Now this is another really nice feature of Maya. You can create your bump maps and everything inside it. So I throw in the noise and I throw in my other piece of noise inside one layer texture and multiply them over each other. So just multiply one. And now I get this map here. Now this map I want to hook up to a luminance node. For some reason for some reason Maya does not like um, does not like hooking up textures immediately into its bump nodes. So these textures have to go through a luminance node so it becomes a value node. Only with procedurals. Usually files work immediately with this but procedurals you really want to throw them into a luminance node. So I throw this into a luminance node, hit default. Nope. You don't want to hit default but if you do usually it's input to value, no, out color to value, but just so it's easier for you, throw in that layered texture into value. There. Then this luminance, this little piggy, you throw into this little piggy, the bump, overall bump. There you go. Now you don't want to put too much bump, don't go all crazy, just go 0.5. And if we render this, I'll save this image and I'll show you what it does. Render that out. And as you can see, it added that extra bump. A bit too much bump. Yep, that's too much. Oh my god, that's terrible. So point 0.1. 
render that. I don't know why my render speed is so slow today, but this usually renders in seconds. Especially if you're working with procedurals. Procedural textures do not take up much render time. I mean, I could throw in more procedurals and still get the same render time, which is amazing. Like, you guys saw my post, right? The crazy, crazy hypershade. That render time was really good. And that had a lot of stuff in it. So yeah, see how what the what the bump does? It really goes in and adds more detail. I'm just toggling between both. And you really get that nice effect. You could even do that with your with your cornea if we had veins. Which I'll show you how to do now using um UVs and UV sets. So let's go back. Um, there's one texture I like the most. Um, just type in eye textures. Then I love this one. This one works the best with everything I'm doing. So view original image. Whoever made this, thank you. You are the best. So throw this onto my desktop. Originally you might want to work with sets, like project sets and stuff. I'm a lazy bastard, so nope. So my cornea is locked. Unlock that. Why did I put an area light? I don't know. Somebody tell me why. I have to delete that. Go into my outliner. Uh, point light. Okay, delete that. Yep, that's all I need. <clears throat> okay, so now back into my Mia material. Craft this. Alright, uh, I'll go back to my viewport 2.0. Okay, first of all, this purple is a bit weird. I need to change that. Change it quick. Just desaturate it a bit. Yep, that's the purple I want. All right. <clears throat> so now, um, let's add veins. Okay, so we're gonna work with UV sets because I like the UVs the way they are working. And if I were to apply that texture, it will not work the same way. It has to be projected from here. All right, so how do you do that? How do you apply a texture with totally different UVs, but on the same mesh? You use UV sets. So create UVs, create you copy the current UVs to a new UV set, and copy into new UV set, then option box. Option box. Anytime now. Please don't crash. Uh oh. I hit the option box. Why didn't the option box come out? Anyways, it should have come out. In a perfect world, it would. There you go. Oh, I didn't have it selected. You have to select. <laughs> Anyways, select the object, create UVs, copy UVs to a new layers, UVZ, option box. There. Um. Nope, not projection set this time. This time this will be I UV set two. Ha <laughs> ha Whatever. I mean you guys can name it what you want. <coughs> Apply close. I mean name it your first child's name if you want to, but anyways. So now what I did was edit UVs, UV texture editor. What I did was, I now have two UV sets for the same object. So there's the map one, it's the original UV set, and then there's the new UV set. Okay, so in this UV set, I can warp the UVs any way I want, and I will not affect the UVs of the first set. And all the textures that I have applied are using the first set, which is quite cool, right? So create UVs, planar mapping, Z Z axis projection with the keep image height and ratio apply close 
Now it's all projected this way, the way I want it to be done. So now if I apply a new texture onto this, so on my layered texture, in my layered texture, create a new texture, put that on top, then apply a new UV set. UV set, apply a new texture, file. File, apply a new file. So I take this file and I throw in the eye texture. Okay, let it load. And oh dear lord, what happened? Why is it projecting this way? This is terrible. Oh my days. Because we did not hook it up to the new UV set. To do that, go to your um, select your geo first, then go to your window, relationship editors, UV linking, texture centric, and should open a box. There you go. So now, file one, you really want to name this stuff. So, file one, hook that up to your new UV set, and there you go. Now it's following the UVs of that UV set which is friggin amazing and <laughs> now there are some things that are happening that we do not want happening so we need to make an alpha for this again and we want to multiply this over so let's select our layer texture again so this layer texture I want to multiply this over multiply there so we get our bloodshot red and we get our pure whites okay and anything in between is the veins now first of all the veins are too near so I can just go in and edit my UVs so edit UVs create UV texture editor take all my UVs scale this down no scale that up scale that down yeah I was right the first time <coughs> Scale that down. Then, I don't know, you guys could stretch a bit. I don't know. What are you guys? What do you guys want? Do what you want. So now the texture is coming up. We can see now that some of that iris is coming up from the first from the image. We don't like that. Um there are several ways to eliminate that. We could go into our UVs. Um, UV texture editor and just take those UVs and scale this down um, scale that up and you lose that but we don't we don't want to do that we'll just make an alpha so in our layer texture we can make an alpha again for any layer we want so I'll take a ramp again and this time we can copy the we can copy the shape of the texture. So go into the layered texture, throw in that ramp into the alpha, graph this network again. Graph network, there you go. So in the alpha, this ramp, we'll make it black and white again. Come on, black and white. Is it so hard? there and now it's just a matter of moving the values again and it's backwards it's on backwards Okay, I need to figure this. Oh yeah, right. Um, <laughs> our ramp type should be circular fish. <laughs> All right, there you go.
Why isn't this work? Oh yeah, we have to link the no do we? No. Do we? No. It's terrible. Oh yeah, window. Um again we have to link that to the new UVs. So settings are uh, relationship editors. Uh, UV linking texture centric this is ramp 5 select the geo ramp 5 that up to I set to and there you go now it's gonna work the way we want it to um go back to our alpha and fix that And there you go. Now it's really deleting out that area that we don't like. That mean area that we don't like. Oh, well, we're losing a lot of stuff. I want to blend that a bit. Whoop, not too much. And sharpen that. Oh, not too much again. There. Oh, I still see that outline. That will come up in the render. There. Perfect. Awesome. And that's it. So now, if you want to apply this as a... If you want to apply this as a... Bump map. All you have to do is hook it up to a luminance node again. So I can take this file, then I'll hook it up to a luminance node. So I'll take a luminance node, luminance, luminance node, throw it here, take this file, throw it, oh no, before I do that, I'll take a layered texture first. Because I want to mix it with my alpha. I don't want any of the iris to be coming out in front. So by default. And then throw in this alpha. There you go. Now that should work perfectly. Now if I throw this into the luminance. By default again we don't want to do that. Because it's hard. We're lazy. Throw it into the value. And the luminance we throw into the overall bump and we're done that should work well again not too much bump too much bump is bad bump so bring that to one no let's do two point two there and we're set guys that's it and now if we render this with all the bumps and all the stuff it should look awesome So yeah, this is really just the starting point guys, I mean this is nothing, this is all basic. If I were you guys, really go in and take these theories, take these techniques and really experiment at your own time. Really play with Maya, you know, make it, think of it as Photoshop, it's not really, it's not really that hard to get used to it. Yeah, this is all basic, I mean the lighting is terrible, the the bumps on the veins could be a bit more colored the veins should be more colorful and I don't know just add more color I would have fixed the texture and really erased it in Photoshop and I don't know more minor adjustments so anyways I hope that helped guys um, if you like this um, I could do more so tell me what you guys want me to cover next time and I'll do it I guess when I have the time yeah all right take care guys